We're so happy that you're here to rejoice and worship with us. Let's stand and go to God in a time of prayer. God, we thank you for calling us to this room. We thank you that we can come here and just worship you, God, that we can see you face to face, that we can feel your presence in this place, God, and overall just glorify you, God. God, I pray that we come with open hearts to receive your word in this place. I pray against distractions of the day, good and bad, God. Let us just focus on you and what you have to say here, God. I pray that whatever happens on this stage or in this room only happens to glorify you. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. One salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion, by his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is death's defeat. All praise to God the Father. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was in his the hope of heaven he's preparing a place for me far beyond what hearts imagine ears have heard of what eyes have seen i believe that the day is coming his return to claim his bride like the altar keep it burning see the lame the Praise to the Holy Spirit, oh God has 
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down, he's faithful through generations, so I I've still got joy, I've still got joy in chaos, I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't be going under, I'm not held by my own strength, cause I'll build my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through every season. So why would he fail now? He won't. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he
Just getting started When I hit a wall You just walk through When I face a mountain You are the maker So it's gonna move When I'm out of faith You are still faithful When I'm at my worst You are still good and all of my questions, you are the answer, it all points to you. You're the God of the breakthrough, when I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. And there's no way out, there's one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason. In the praise, praise, praise. Out of our wrongs, you write a story. Out of the cross comes rivers of grace. Out of the grave, burst of revival, no tomb can contain. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. When there's no way out, there's one thing I know. You're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to pray. Sing it. Praise, praise. I still got a reason to pray. I still got a reason to praise. When you come around dry bones, come to life deserts, to paradise, don't you start rolling away. When you come around, my heart starts to beat again, Long stretch to breathe you in, don't you start often with praise. When you come around, my heart starts to drive a lot, Desires the paradise, don't you start rolling away? When you come around, my heart starts to beat again. Long stretch to breathe you in, so just erupting with praise. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working away through. When there's no way out, there's one thing I know. You're still on your throne, so whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. I still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. Cause you're the God of the breakthrough. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. When there's no way out, there's one thing I know. You're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I still got a reason to pray.
for the Lord God Almighty writes. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty Thank you for worshiping with us. You may be seated. Hello. Welcome to our uh, Friday night service here at Calvary, and let's just uh, give another hand for the worship. I'm just going to start off with a little bit of prayer. So, uh, God, we thank you for bringing us here tonight, Lord. And, uh, God, we just uh, also thank you for getting us through the week. God, as we use tonight as a bridge to the weekend, Lord, we pray that um, we come to get filled back up after being poured out all week, Lord. And I just thank you for all the men and women here tonight and their willingness to come and worship the Lord uh, here on a Friday night. And we thank you for their faithfulness in doing so for all these years. Uh, I pray, God, that you get all the glory tonight through Pastor Ben's teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as usual. Um, Welcome to our U-Turn service, uh, Sunday night prayer on our men's second phase facility. Uh, that is 201 Hathaway Park, like always, where the second phasers are over there with Keith. Um, the format for that is uh, we get online on Facebook. You send in your prayers. We write them down and hand them out to the men, and they are faithful uh, uh, to lift them up during that time, and God does answer prayers. And we do get prayers from all over the world, uh, from Africa and from the Philippines, and uh, it's wonderful to see the faithfulness of you guys tuning in. So if you haven't tuned in, uh, that starts at uh, six, 6 o'clock on Sunday night. And when Keith is away, like this weekend, um, we will not be live on Sunday, 
but uh, we'll be back again next Sunday. So when Keith is not around, we usually don't go live. Just for you, those who um, are a little who wonder what, what's going on on Sunday, just to give you a heads up. And uh, join us every Monday night live on YouTube at 6.30 for our Once Blind Addictions Ministry with uh, Pastor Ben and Jody at the Women's Ranch in Calvary Fellowship. Um, I do believe we have a slide for that. Yeah, we do. And um, uh, it's cool because uh, it's, a, it's an addiction ministry. You get out, and Pastor Ben is teaching through Philippians chapter 4. I believe he, he, he got through one verse uh, last Monday. Uh, so um, if you're new to that, you can get on YouTube and type in Pastor Ben Willing Vessel. That will bring you to their page, and you can be faithful to watch that at any point during the week, not just Monday at 630. So I encourage you to tune into that. It's a, it's a wonderful teaching. And uh, also Monday night here, right here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Uh, last Monday, uh, Pastor Kevin filled in for Matt Korf, but uh, they are studying through the minor prophets here. And uh, that is Monday night here at 7 o'clock in the sanctuary. And if you'd like to stay for prayer after, uh, we have women pray with women, men with men after the service for about a half hour. So um, that, that goes on as well. Um, Next in line is the U-Turn Second Phase School of Ministry Men's Prayer, Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Um, as Brian always says, if you're catching a, a pattern here, is we like to study the Word and we like to pray. And so for the men on Tuesday night um, at 7 o'clock, if you come to Hathaway, um, both Second Phase houses join them in for the prayer. And sometimes we do a little house, uh, housekeeping stuff, but... Uh, uh, we were faithful to lift each other up and just, just check in with one another and see how we're doing. And uh, that's important uh, in ministry. Um, sometimes it's two or three times a week. Uh, sometimes it's a daily thing. Sometimes it's hourly. So uh, feel free to always check in on, on the people that you love. And uh, next up is the Calvary Chapel Thursday afternoon study. Um, that is at the train station at the YMCA, right behind the YMCA on 8th Street. And that's at Thursday at 2.30 p.m. while the renovations are happening. Um, Mark Brandt and Keith Zimmerman have been going back and forth um, teaching through the book of Mark. So um, uh, please come out early. It's not a huge building, so uh, there's limited seating, but uh, I, I'm sure if you make it there, you can stand. You know, uh, it's worth it. And... Uh, Moving on, Thursday night, this is Women's Fellowship Night, located, uh, located over at the Annex, um, and at 6.30, there is child care, so women, if you're looking for a nice fellowship night, and a night to just relax and meet some people, and just, uh, you know, go over your week and, and pray for each other, um, the Ladies' Fellowship Night at the Annex is uh, Thursday at 6.30, so um, that would be a blessing if you would come to that, and um, Friday afternoon, I believe, uh, Yes, Friday afternoon, that was this today, uh, Pastor Dan. Now, today we had it up in the sanctuary because of the noise, um, but he, uh, he was teaching through James now. Um, update, this just in, it's James, not Peter. And uh, um, I'll be here for all your updates all night if you need me. And uh, Keith's not here. Nope, he's not here. Okay, uh, they also do a lunch at 12 o'clock on Friday. So if you're hungry and you like to study the Bible, what a, what a wonderful combination uh, for that. And uh, come on out. We're happy to have everyone. And uh, moving down, this next one is, okay, so we have the missing piece, Saturday night at 7 p.m. This is located in the stables back behind here in the alley. And um, the format for the missing piece is testimony and teaching out of the one-year Bible. And um, the fifth uh, the fifth Saturday of a month would be a potluck, so that it's cool to play games and stuff. And it's just a great time for weekend fellowship, and um, it is a family uh, addictions recovery meeting, so um, please come out to that. If you haven't experienced it and you're not doing anything on a Saturday night, um, what better way to come out and join, join in on that? And uh, we do want to announce our CC Lab Good Friday service. This would be this coming Friday here. It is not a U-turn service. It is... Um, it is Pastor Miles will be given the word, and um, I'm sorry to inform you that there will be no child care provided. Um, that wasn't my choice, but it is, it is what it is. Um, so please come out next Friday and uh, listen to a, a wonderful Easter message from Pastor Miles. And um, we have worship and prayer night. So this is a little bit in the future here. Let's look forward to the end of April. And we have a night of worship and prayer. And this is Friday, April 26th here. Um, and pretty much if you were here last time, um, Joey gave a wonderful message. And it's just going to be a night of, uh, of worship of the Lord and just hearing what he has to say to us through song. And um, so uh, there will be child care. Um, wonderful. And um, 
I just encourage you guys to come out with the hearts open to, to worship the Lord like we always should have. And um, uh, the U-Turn Apparel is now available for a donation after service. Last week, we had a little bit of an uh, uh, issue with them being locked up, but I know some people and we got a key and we got the shirts back. So the wonderful team of men back there are very, uh, they're very faithful in uh, being wonderful salesmen. They're not getting commissioned, so they're really pouring their hearts into this thing. And uh, we thank you. And a lot of the work is getting them up from the basement. So please, uh, please support our ministry and buy a shirt maybe uh, for someone you know or, or yourself as well. And um, uh, here at U-Turn for Christ, we don't pass a plate to take offering, but an offering box is located in the back here on Friday night, so you can give to the Lord as he puts on your heart, and you can also scan the QR code or text 717-323-5633 to help donate, and we really do appreciate um, all your help, and I know uh, with the trip to Africa, Dan has been really blessed to receive your uh, donation, so I want to thank you guys for helping support Dan and, his, and him and Keith's trip coming up. We're going to continue to pray for that trip. Um, it is in June, um, a couple weeks in June, so um, it's, I've been on a mission trip before, and it is life-changing, so we are very honored to have Dan go represent U-Turn. Dan's been a faithful servant here at First Phase for quite some time now, and um, I just ask you to keep that trip in prayer. Um, and now, the cool thing is I get to welcome uh, Dan as he has a First Phase graduate, so please welcome First Phase Overseer Dan Barley. Hello, church. I'm thrilled to introduce Tyler tonight. In times of trouble, we encounter two types of people, those who remain down and those who find the strength to rise again. Tyler belongs to the latter group. When he stumbled, he realized that he needed to seek God's guidance and get back on the right path. He opted for U-turn, where he could humble himself and allow God to restore him. Though, though it was difficult to be separated from his loved ones, he made new friends and placed his trust in God. Even though he was away from his family, he found joy in the company of his new brothers. Tyler has been a great source of inspiration and is always willing to assist those around him. Being a natural leader, it's unfortunate to see him leave, but at the same time, it's inspiring to see him return to arise as a godly man for his family. A verse I feel fitting to send you off with Tyler is Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his ch children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loves us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Here's Tyler. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, some prayer. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, just uh, come before you and um, thank you for this chance to be able to just glorify you and uh, really magnify how you've moved in my life, Lord. Just uh, pray that you help me put myself and everything that's of me to the side and just um, speak on your glory and just magnify you, Lord. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to hear from you, Lord. So thank you and um, just pray this all in the name of your glorious Son. Amen. All right, so I was going to wing it, but I was promptly reminded that winging it in my, it's not a good idea. So, um, yeah, really, uh, nothing, sorry, nothing I say is going to fully explain or give justice to God for what he pulled me out of. Words just aren't enough. Um, it's uh, crazy to me hearing all the different stories as I come here, you know, I went to a rise and, uh, you know, different stories, different struggles, same God, same Savior. Um, before I got in my life, I was broken. Uh, I was just a sorry shell of a man that uh, Satan had picked apart and left for dead. I had no one, nothing, um, nowhere to turn. And um, after my 11th overdose, which... I, uh, by the grace of God, that I'm still here. Uh, I found myself at the doorstep of an old friend. Uh, he passed away, but his mother was like a mother to me. And um, for some reason, God led me there. And um, ultimately, that led me to arise, calling Polly. I don't know, a lot of you might know Polly, but uh, he told me something different, something I never heard before. Uh, he said that all we can offer you is freedom from addiction through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Um, I never heard of freedom from addiction. The world has you think that you're going to be, uh, you know, something wrong with your head. There's a mental, uh, whatever. Bunch of just lies, you know. I just accepted the fact that I'd be stuck on Suboxone or methadone for the rest of my life and constantly diagnosed with a new thing every time I went to see a doctor. Um, shortly after being going to, first of all, I didn't know where Maine was on the map. I'm going to make that clear. It, <laughs> They told me we were going up, like, near Canada. And, like, where Machias is, it's, like, the end of the country. So it was the middle of winter when I got up there. I was pretty broken, but I wasn't fully surrendered. And um, it just, the whole year in Jersey, we hadn't seen any snow. Just as I'm going up to Maine, it's snowing, snowing gets worse and worse. And for the first, like, month and a half, it didn't stop snowing. Um, I was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by snow. I, I was froggy, I wanted to go, plotting on how I could leave, but there was no way out. <laughs> so um, I, God kept the, kept it, um, he made, he helped, he, he did all that and I, to, to I surrendered, ultimately. Uh, the difference with all of this was, man, there was a joy in that house, a love, um, a peace. There's brothers, it wasn't like secular programs, it wasn't like, Everyone's just waiting for the next man to fall. You know, I have a, there was just, they were well seasoned, you know, they've been walking with the Lord for a little bit, but man, it was powerful. The love that Christ had in that house, it was, uh, it was amazing. It was what kept me there. Um, sorry. Uh, not even really reading this. Um, yeah, so. For the first two weeks there, I was broken, like I said, and I just sat on the steps and cried for two weeks during devotional time. Uh, just didn't know, I, I had no, uh, no hope for a life. I had no drive, no life in me. And um, as the Lord started to chip away at my heart and uh, soften my heart, I really felt um, just like a revival, like no other, like a purpose to live. He gave me a drive to, uh, like, a different love for others. You know, I thought I knew love before, but he gave me a deeper love for people that I didn't even know. You know what I mean? Like, he gave me, he just, he brought me to life. There's no other way to explain it. He, you know, he was, he's a God of restoration. And um, just months of serving up there, I watched him bring many brothers to life. And uh, it was, it's encouraging that you feel the change start to break. You know, that bondage, you're not... Uh, you're not, you're not stuck to anymore. Um, unfortunately, my, I was like the, the seed that fell on rocky ground. You know, uh, I sprang up, I was, you know, I loved it, I loved the Lord, um, but when trials and tribulations came, when the sun came out, uh, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have my foundation built on the rock. Uh, ultimately, it led to uh, bitterness again. Um, I tried to keep this part of me to the side, a, a piece of me that I wanted to keep that I didn't want to fully surrender. And uh, I didn't seek counsel. I started stray away from the Lord and uh, started drinking. Um, I left the program. Uh, I, I relapsed like a week before I was going to graduate and just kept self-destructing. And um, it was three weeks of a run. Um, I'm very grateful God pulled me out of it. Normally, uh, jail or something worse uh, is what stops me from anything like that. But uh, when God was faithful, he gave me a chance to restore myself, bringing me here, sending me to uh, love a U-turn. He put me, uh, he put, I was trying to figure out how to be a leader, how to be a godly father, because now I have a son on the way. God blessed me with that. And I had a beautiful and amazing fiance, um, but I was just self-destructing. Um, and uh, I mean, I just say that to say he he brought me here. He used my he used Satan's tactics to glorify himself in the end. Even through all the bad and negativity that I went through, that I put myself through, that I let Satan do to me, God used it to glorify himself. He uh, he put godly men in my life that. Um, ultimately helped me to better prepare for what's to come as if I've never been a father. I don't even know where to begin. But um, man, God, uh, he showed up 
and he was faithful to do so. He's, he stayed by my side, and um, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for you, Turn, for the leaders here, for Dan, Ben. Uh, we have, it's an amazing thing that the, you guys have going on here, and uh, it's bittersweet having to leave. It's, uh, you know, I have family down here now, too, and I know, but, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, very grateful for God and what he's done in my life. And uh, that, that's all I got. We thank Tyler for his testimony, and, and we do serve an awesome God and a God of restoration. And um, we would like to be selfish and keep everyone forever. Um, some people are meant for the mafia, and like myself, and some people are meant to go back to where God needs them. And, and uh, I'd like to present Tyler with his certificate of graduation. And just as an act of faith, we're going to pray for him. If you can, uh, reach your hand out, and we're just going to bless his time back. So, Lord, we do thank you for Tyler, and uh, we love you, and thank you for the time he's been with us and the experience example of Christ that he's shown while he's here. God, we do ask that you bless him on his trip back on Tuesday, Lord. You fill him up with the Holy Spirit, and you give him the ability to be the man of God, the father, and the husband that you intend him to be. Um, God, we thank you. We love you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, let's just take a few minutes to get up, stretch your legs, uh, say hi to someone you've never met before, or buy a t-shirt, whatever you like. <laughs>
Good evening. I would say it's nice to see you, but it's dark out there. <clears throat> As you guys uh, find your seats, if you would turn to Romans chapter 4. And tonight we'll be talking about the faith of Abraham. Picking up in uh, verse 13. Read through the passage and then we'll have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Paul says, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. <clears throat> for if those who were of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be uh, according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Verse 19, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, <clears throat> it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who was raised up, Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this evening. God, we just pray for this time. Pray for this message, what you have for us here the end of Romans chapter 4. Lord, would you help us to understand? Lord, believing and trusting that you are the only one that could teach us, that could speak directly to each individual, to each heart, to address each need, although different, simultaneously, Lord, you could speak to us and transform us. We're praying that you would do that tonight, Lord. That you would cause us to be good receivers of your word that we would hear something new, we would learn th new things about you, and it would cause us to walk differently and live differently when we leave here tonight. So we put this time at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the faith of Abraham. We know that from what Pastor Keith had shared um, last week, that this is all about faith and not the law. It's not about uh, performing any of these things. Um, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Um, so let me share a couple of verses with you real quick, just to kind of get us started. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 says, For when we were still without strength... In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans 5, 8, 
But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God did this for us, despite our ability to keep the law or to be on our best behavior. In fact, <clears throat> he did this when we were at our worst. He did it without the law's help, and he did it without our help. And in that idea, and what we're about to share tonight, I hope that you'll see that grace has way more power than the law ever did. Now, verses, chapter, uh, verses 13 uh, to 15 here. For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath for where there is no law, there is no transgression. And the idea is this. If God only honored the promise or promises based on our, our obedience to the law, then the, promised would, the promise would be cast aside or it would be invalid because we're not perfect. We can't keep the law. In fact, it's not even a, a mixture of faith and some kind of law obedience. And we saw the examples last week. Abraham and David both were counted righteous by faith alone. So in short, God's promises to us are not dependent on our ability to keep the law. Isn't that great? <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. I mean, after all, the law, it says in verse 15, brings about wrath. It actually promotes defeat. It makes you see how awful you are and that you're not perfect and that you can't do it. It's, it promotes pessimism. It brings you to a place of needing a savior. And that's what it's supposed to do. Um, a place where um, you will end up putting all of your faith into him. And that is the only reasonable next step. And that's what the law was, was there to do. Now, verse 16 he says, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only those who are of the law, but also to those uh, who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Um, he says, it is a faith that it might be according to grace. That reminds me of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So you see, we're not technically saved by faith. It's, it's grace, right? You're saved by grace through faith. We have access to grace through faith, not by works. And it's important to realize that before you make a decision to invite Christ in your life, um, we're all lost in and of ourselves, right? And apart from Christ, we are radically sinful. Most of us completely unaware of how radically sinful we actually are. And that is why we need a radical savior that can give us radical righteousness. You see, following some rules and getting a little gold star for behaving well sometimes, it's not quite radical enough. It takes faith in him to have access to grace. Faith in him, Jesus, uh, the, the radical one, right? Titus chapter three, verse five says this, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And in Hebrews chapter 6, 11 through 12, it says this, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. 
It's through faith, right? He goes on uh, in verse 17. Let Let me just share this. In verses 17 through 22, Uh, What's really interesting to me here is that it seems as though Paul gives us a peek, uh, a glimpse into the mindset or perspective of Abraham. We get to check this out to understand how he chose to have such great faith despite what life was going on around him, despite the circumstances, even though the odds were stacked against him, maybe even Uh, biologically, (laughs) um, he chose to simply believe God. And so we see here, verse 17, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And so Um, you'd have to ask yourself, uh, and it may seem fairly obvious, but what was the object of his faith? What was the object of Abraham's faith? What what was the target? What, What was the one thing that he could lean on and depend on and count on for all of this? Was it his good heart? I think not. Was it the prayers he said when he was a little child when he was a little boy? I think not. It was God, and it was God alone. And I got to tell you, I was challenged by this because early on in in my life, I actually found recently, as I look back, I thought, you know what? That was me. I had more faith in the prayer, the actual words that I said. I had more faith in the prayer to get saved than the God I was praying to. And you see, that's dangerous Our faith is to be in God and God alone. Not that I did something when I was 10 years old. I should be doing that every day, even at 43. So here's the point. Give you an image. R. Kent Hughes says this. Some have a great faith in thin ice. But they didn't live to tell us about it. They actually died by faith. And the idea is... Having great faith in the wrong object is very dangerous. Having great faith in being religious or following all the rules or following the laws and thinking that that, that's that's getting something for you is very dangerous. It's better to have a very little faith in a very great God. A little faith like the size of a mustard seed is so much better than to have great faith in something that seems more like thin ice. Abraham had a great faith. There's no doubt about that, but it was, it was exemplary. It it was, it, it stood out because his great faith was in a great God and in him alone. What's interesting here is it would appear that Abraham also had a grasp or a hold of two major concepts early on that I find remarkable. He understood great things about that great God that he had a great faith in. And one of them is this. It says, who gives life to the dead. Right? You see that there in verse 17? He believed in God's resurrection power. And that would be a huge help to him later on. He also believed, it says here, he believed that God can call those things which do not exist as though they did. In other words, God creates from nothing. He believed that. And again, that would help him out. Huge help later on. So make sure that your faith is in God and God alone. And make sure that you're in this word, that you're spending time with him and and discovering his, his character and his attributes and what he's capable of so that you can have a great faith and a great God like Abraham. Now, let's go to verse 18 and 19. It says here, excuse me. Who contrary to hope, and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. 
And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham, even with this great faith, faced some roadblocks. There, there were some challenges or, or a hindrance, an obstacle here that he would have to overcome in his mind. He would have to try to reckon. The first snag that would be challenging is that he and Sarah were to have a child. Now consider the age of both of them and the fact that Abraham may have very well been impotent and Sarah was barren. But God said, you're going to have a child. However, we see here that ultimately Abraham chose to walk in whatever God said over what seemed to be impossible. God's just going to make a way. I mean, there was just no denying that in Abraham's mind. He had a way of seeing God that I think we need to really grab a hold of. You see, he saw God as being bigger than the circumstances. He was able to do the math and choose God anyway. He weighed the human, this is our Kent Hughes quote, he weighed the human impossibility of being a father against the divine impossibility of God being able to break his word. And he decided that if God was God, then nothing is impossible. So, you know, it's going to be impossible for me and Sarah to have, but it's even more impossible for God to lie. So I guess we're having a boy. I mean, that was just his faith, right? It's incredible. He had hope, right? You see, uh, who contrary to hope and hope believed, he had hope. And that's important for us to understand. I mean, when you're hopeless, it's, it's a pretty dire place, but he had hope and that is not mere wishing, he, he didn't wish for a kid. He had hope because God said so. He had hope in something that was concrete and definite. You see, hope biblically is an absolute expectation of a future good. He said it, it will happen. And when you wait on the Lord, I know for, for a personal uh, testimony that God's promises, if you remain still, God's promises, eventually they're not promises anymore. They're events they are facts. It happened. It, it's an incident. This is, it actually came to pass. It's no longer a promise. He did it. Abraham has a relationship with a God that is that, just that confident. And then to think uh, for Abraham to have this, these conversations with the Lord, to think that one day he was going to have a son. Now, that's a pretty big deal. But descendants as numerous as the stars? The idea that the whole earth would be blessed through him? That had to be overwhelming. It probably felt like something he did not deserve or didn't even want to be a part of. It's God's choosing him, and that might be hard to reckon with. I know I felt that way. God, don't, don't you know who I am? You want me and Jody to, be, to run a, a women's ministry? Like, don't... Don't, don't you know who I am? And, and I feel like in those moments, God shows up and says, I'll be the judge of that. Just do what you're told. Just walk in it. Same, same with Abraham. Uh, don't you know how old I am? Don't you see? And he says, hey, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Just, just walk in it. You see, Abraham fully considered the facts. He weighed the odds, and he fully understood what he faced. And then he fully believed God at his word. He just decided, like, I just am going to believe what God says. It says he didn't even take into account that his own, didn't consider his own body, the fact it was already dead. In verse 19 there, where it says that, and, and not being weak in faith, um, God actually demonstrated what looks like resurrection in Abraham and Sarah by, by resurrecting their ability to conceive, by making what was 
impossible now possible. Abraham had faith in that. I don't know how God's going to work. I'm not even considering my body. What's more important is God's word. And he just walked in that. It's remarkable. Verse 20 to 22. Um, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham's faith seemed to have um, a goal in mind. There was a, there was a design or an objective. He, he had an objective. One we see here, obviously, is to give God glory in verse 20. And two, um, righteousness. He wanted to be righteous. He wanted to be right with God. He wanted to have right living, be in right standing uh, with a holy God. And so, it says he did not waver. In other words, Abraham didn't dispute or argue with himself on the matter. What's remarkable here, what's something that I could learn from Abraham for sure, is it seems that Abraham actually gave glory to God before the events even took place. He's giving God glory by just believing before his wife even got pregnant. He's believing God at his word that Isaac would be born. Believing as if it already happened just because God said so. God said it, it's going, it's happening. Just, it's just a matter of fact. And the same later with Isaac going up on the mountain, Abraham believed that God would either provide a substitute or that Isaac would be resurrected because God promised, God said, he's going to make a way for this to happen or he's going to let me kill Isaac and then bring him back to life. But but God said, he just, so he marched up the mountain with his son and was ready to do whatever because he knew it was going to be fine. God said, Verse 21, there's, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. You know, um, God doesn't say things kind of half-heartedly or lightly or make promises in a whimsical way or just kind of like, because it was a nice thought. You know, oh, maybe I changed my mind or whatever. Um, and you see this, uh, there's a couple scriptures I have that, to back this up. In Isaiah 38, 7, um, <clears throat> says, And this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Old Testament God, thank goodness he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because it comes up again in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. You know, he, it, unless you run away <laughs> and, and, and try to figure it out your own way, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. It is God who is faithful, perfectly faithful. And so Abraham's faith, David's faith, my faith, your faith should be based on his faithfulness and his ability. You see, my being faithful and my abilities have little or nothing to do with it. Thank goodness, because I would miss all of it. Verse 23, back to chapter 4, 23 to 25 says, now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Righteousness is imputed to us the same way as Abraham. Faith 
in the Lord. Some of you have maybe heard me share this before, but I have to admit that I often forget that. I often forget that when Jesus died on the cross, I, it's easy for me to remember he died for all of my sins. He, 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 took, he took on all my sin, and, and, I, and I don't have to pay the price, and I don't have to go to hell, and I'm yes and amen, and I just kind of walk away, and I forget. He actually gave me something back in return. His righteousness. He, he, took, he took my dirty coat and gave me a clean, pure white coat. You don't have to conjure up your own righteousness. You can just walk in mine, he said. It's not about me trying to figure out how to be righteous or me trying to figure out how to be faithful. Like, you know, oh, Lord, I, I, I did this, that, and a third this week, and I, I really wasn't the best husband I could be. How in the world can I get up and share a message on a Friday night? And he said, doesn't matter. I, I, I know you've asked for forgiveness. I know you've repented. But you're not standing up there in your faithfulness and righteousness. It's mine. I forget that. So, this is a faith that makes us righteous before a holy God. Same as it was for Abraham, for us. It also is a faith that sees the magnitude of his love and the limitless possibilities of God. That he can do anything he pleases just because he can. Like race from the dead or create stuff from nothing. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He's creating that from nothing. He's not taking my, my, my beat up, shot out heart and trying to like put band-aids on it and make it new. He's like, that, eh, whatever. And then I'm, I'm making a new one out of nothing. I'm going to create in you a clean heart. It's remarkable. Thank goodness. <clears throat> this faith that Abraham had, that we should have, it doesn't deny the worldly evidence when the odds are not in our favor. It's faith like Abraham had that evaluates and measures it all out in light of what God's word says about it, what he has promised, and then simply chooses that. Yeah, it seems like it's impossible. Yeah, it, it, it seems like there's no way. But we sing songs about it because it's true. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. He opens doors we cannot see. God will make a way for me. God will be my guide, right? He'll be my teacher. He's always on my side. You, some of you know the song. Faith like this is the only way we can ever be righteous before him. And when we accept him in our lives as Lord and Savior, we get access to those limitless possibilities. What's dead in your life that he's going to raise up? Right? What, what, what is he going to create or do in you that, 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 that comes from nothing? You know, when uh, you think about it, we're born into this planet and, uh, you know, we're like, man, life is hard out there. Look at the crazy world we live in and all this kind of thing. And you would think like, man, the odds, the, 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 the cards are, are, are stacked against us. And God says, no, no, you have been born for such a time as this, you've, hear, you've heard me share this before, you didn't land in this century by accident. It wasn't just, you know, rolling the dice that, that you were born the, the day that you were born and in, in, in the decade and the generation that you were born because God did all of that on purpose so that the odds would be stacked in your favor. That, that you would have just the right people in your life to hear just the right messages because he already foresaw all of this and he said, if he or she is born at this right time, this will be the best opportunity for them to hear about me. You see, it's all stacked in your favor. That's why you're here. That's why you've gone through what you've gone through because God is on your side even when you don't feel it, even, even when it doesn't seem like that or it seems impossible. If I could have the worship team come up, I, I know I'm a little bit uh, early, but that's great. We'll have more time for prayer. 
It says that he was delivered, right, in verse 25, who was delivered up for our offense. He's talking about Jesus, right? The fact that, that we have all, all of this privilege and all of this access to him, that word delivered there is uh, per, parodidemia, I think that's how you say it. It's a word used when casting someone into prison. He's been delivered and, and, and cast into prison. And then of a prisoner being brought to the place of execution. So he was delivered in that way, in that fashion. For our offenses, my, my stuff put him in there, made him do that. He was then raised up because of our justification, it says there at the end of 25, that we <clears throat> might have access to an undeserved righteousness. We actually deserved to die and go to hell, but he died instead. He rose from the dead, and now we have access, like Abraham, to righteousness that is clearly undeserved. John 6, 29, as we wrap up, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. We must believe on the name of Jesus. We must make sure that our faith is just in God and God alone. Our faith is in Jesus. It's just Jesus. We don't add anything to it. We, we've got nothing to add to it. All we can do is, is lay down at his feet and say, thank you. Thank you for the gift. And just like Abraham, it will be counted to us for righteousness, right? Make sure that not only do you have your faith in, in God, but make sure you understand how great a God he is and what he is actually capable of because there will be a time like Abraham where if you don't have your faith in the right object, circumstances in life and, and these kinds, it, it, it can really get you spinning. You can end up dizzy trying to figure out what's God going to do and how's he going to do it. Or like Abraham, you could just say, God said, God, God said this, yes and amen, I'm just going to keep it moving. Now, Abraham wasn't perfect. He had an Ishmael moment, tried to help God. That didn't disqualify him either. God still said, and Isaac came. God's promised salvation and then some abundant life, whatever to many of us gathered here and watching online. If you're struggling to get a grasp of that, if you need your faith to be made a little more simple, a little bit more smaller, set a great faith in fragile things, to have a tiny faith in a great God, would you come up and get prayer tonight? We're going to have the guys come up over here and, and, and the girls over here. Come get prayer. Come, come recommit. I know I, I, I need prayer. I need to have faith like Abraham, especially in this crazy, distracted, a thousand mile an hour world that we live in. Take some time tonight and slow down. Spend time with Jesus. Come, come and get prayer. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place.
place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. It set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than here in your love. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Lord, we just thank you for this evening. Again, Lord, we're just blessed by your presence. And Lord, we pray that, that you are blessed, that this evening was a sweet aroma. The worship, the prayers, the, the teaching, the learnings, Lord, I pray uh, as, as we leave, God, you would continue to be with us and minister to our hearts, Lord. Let, n let none of this fall on deaf ears, Lord. We want to be challenged. We want to be better for you. We want to grow more and more in love with you, Lord. Thank you for tonight. 
We thank you for being so gracious and so faithful. Thank you for everything, the shedding of the blood, salvation, all of it, Lord. Thank you so much. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.